do the sex. <laughs> Day's locker room talk topic is coffee and cock talk with OnlyFans star Jasmine Jafar. We are drinking coffee together and we're going to be talking about cocks, penises, dicks. I like the word cock. And um, Jasmine has been on my podcast before. You are all hopefully familiar with her. If not, you're going to have to scroll back. But uh, hey, Jasmine, why don't you say hi to my listeners and then just remind them about who you are. Yes, absolutely. So I think this is my third time on now. My name is Jasmine Jafar. I am an OnlyFans creator. Um, A little bit about my background is I'm also a lawyer and I am a second generation um, immigrant from Iran. So again, not your traditional OnlyFans creator background. And I actually left my career in law in order to pursue this. So a lot of people think that's a crazy decision. And you should go back and listen to previous episodes on here where I talk about why I made the decision that I made. But today looks like we have a juicier topic in a way, (laughs) talking about cocks and dicks. And, you know, it's interesting. I like cock was never really used in my like day to day, but online and in porn world, it's like the preferred word for (laughs) penises is cocks. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, uh, my friend Abby, who has been on this podcast with me quite often, uh, gives me shit because I, I use the word cock all the time. I love the word cock. Uh, and she <laughs> and I debate when a penis should be called a po- should be called a cock versus penis versus dick. We will get into that discussion today. I feel like uh, I have this opportunity to discuss that with a professional. Uh, so that's a- exciting. Um, so guys, I am really strangely oddly very excited about this podcast episode and talking about cocks. I get a lot of questions from uh, male listeners and people with cocks. And so today, Jasmine and I are we're gonna we're gonna I mean, this, this whole episode is about cocks, penises, blah, blah, blah. Um, But here's the thing, you are going to want to stay tuned because the triple X um, accompanying episode that is my subscriber only episode uh, is going to be extra special because Jasmine brought some dick pics along and we are going to rate them on my triple X episode that follows this episode. So um, if you like want to know what that's all about, because we're going to go right into talking about dick ratings as soon as we cheers. Um, you're going to find out what dick ratings is all about, and you're going to be able to witness how it's done, and I'm going to learn how to do it. So let's raise our glasses and get ready to talk about cocks. Cheers. So in the previous episode that we did t- together, which mm-hmm. was our last one where you actually helped me come up with my uh, OnlyFans persona. Should I should I ever have one? And boy, am I leaning that direction. Um, and <laughs> one of the things you threw out was cock ratings, which I think, yes, I, maybe I was born to do this. Uh, I didn't know it was a thing <laughs> that uh, yeah. men will pay you and people with penises will pay you to uh, look at their cock and rate it. Can you explain that a little bit? Let's recap it for the listeners. And then we'll go into really just talking about cocks. Yeah, so I think it's it, it's people in this industry. I think most of us are really familiar with it. But I'll be honest, before I was in this industry, I would have had no idea that dick rates or cock rates were a thing. But it is a very common practice as an OnlyFans creator or as a sex worker in general. You know, I post Reddit and people will even pay me, hey, can you just I'll cash app you? Can you rate my cock? And a lot of models or creators have different um, pricing and okay, it's this much for just a number rating. If you want a more detailed rate, it's this much. If you want a topless rating, which is most popular on my <laughs> platform, we I charge 12 bucks and then they send me their dick pics. Some people want you to rate cum shots. Some people want you to rate, um, uh, you know, a little clip of them having sex with their partner. Some people even just want you to rate their whole body. Like they have a whole mirror pick and then they have their cock out and they want you to rate. So Whatever somebody wants you to rate about themselves, they they send it to you. And people can have all types of motivations for this. Some people get off. It's, it's like a, a kink for them to expose themselves and have somebody them know that somebody is looking at it and somebody is taking it all in. 
Um, some people want that. Some people want like, can you show my penis as you're looking at it and reading it? That's what they want. Some people are just curious to see how they measure up. Um, like we talked about last time, a lot of people don't have good info or, or a place to get actual education on what a normal body looks like. I even know when I was young, I was like, are my boobs normal? Is this normal? Is that normal? And like, there was no way for me to know. And so some, some of these, some of these guys, they just want to have somebody that they find attractive in like an anonymous setting. Cause you're not going to go do this in person be like, Hey, what do you think of me? Um, some people specifically want you to hype it up. Some people want you to humiliate it. There's all different kinds of reasons why people, why people. So do they interested. tell you in advance, like that, uh, what they want out of it? Like if someone wants to be humiliated, is that something they're like, can I send you a pic and have you humiliate? They say, do you do SPH, which is small penis humiliation? Sometimes they uh -huh. tell me how small it is, or can you rate my small worthless cock? And that kind of gives you an indication that that's what they're into. If they just send you their cock and they say, please rate it. I know they just want an honest rating. Some people are like, please be really honest. Some people are like, here's my cock. Tell me how you would just love if it was inside you and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, you want me to mm -hmm. kind of talk about. So a lot of times you can tell from how they ask for it. So now we understand the cock rating. Uh, that This is something, you know, I had not heard about and I'm fascinated with. <laughs> Men love showing us their cocks. <laughs> they do. They do. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's the whole unsolicited dick pic thing. You know, I've thought about it a lot because I think generally speaking, women enjoy uh, some women, but I think a good a number of us enjoy when we have someone we're into sending them nude pics. And that doesn't seem odd to us. But the idea of then a cis male wanting to show us their equipment is like, why would you show us that? Right? I think... A lot of time, not always, but men, they, they're very visual and they just can get super turned on by any woman. Like if somebody sends them a pick a nice boob, they're like, great. We don't really work like that. Like, you know, it, a lot of us, not everybody, but if I just get a random penis in my DMs, I'm not automatically like, oh my God, Whew, I don't care how nice it is. You know, it's just like, oh, I wasn't expecting it in this context and I don't care what it looks like. I don't want it. Well, I wanted to start with in your whole life, Jasmine, <laughs> and, and not just OnlyFans, but in your entire yeah. life, can you recall your favorite cock? Like one that you still like think about sometimes and you're like, man, that cock, that was a beautiful cock that fit perfectly. And I miss that cock. Yes, there was one of my ex-boyfriends had the perfect cock and he knew how to use it. And that's another thing is knowing how to use it is, I think, such a big part of the picture. So a lot of times when I, I even talk about this on live streams, maybe not during ratings, where people are like, exactly what size is the best cock? Exactly this. And I'm like, you know, a centimeter here, a centimeter there, an inch here. Like, that's not what is like bringing me the pleasure. The pleasure is you as a person, the chemistry, being able to use it. But I will say his cock, like if I could draw a cock in my head, it would have been his. So tell, tell me about his cock. Okay, okay. So I actually struggle with, I have a hypertonic pelvic floor, which I don't know if you know what that is, but it means that my muscles, like a lot of people do Kegel exercises and stuff to kind of loosen that area. Mine's extra tight. So I actually like, it can hurt a lot for me when it first goes in. So I don't like, like a lot of width, but I like long because that's easier for me to, so his was long and, but I'm also like you, I'm only five feet. So once it hits my cervix or it's like all the way, like any more than that, it's like too big. So this idea yeah. of monster cock for somebody like me would just be miserable. I would rather have a cock too small than a cock too big by far. And so his cock was just the perfect length where it was going as deep as possible, but it wasn't like so big that I was like, well, this is just slamming into me and it's still not all the way in. And, um, he was Nigerian. So he was like well endowed. He had like a really nice shape everything. I think, uh, yeah, I also am short and I, uh, and, and I also, uh, up until I had children, I just found penetration pretty uncomfortable and painful. Some women like that pounding of the cervix. I don't know about you, but it's horrible. Yeah, it's horrible. It makes me like almost cramp up. And I have to be very turned on. I have to be very relaxed and lube. Yeah. And everything. And 
people don't. And that's why I don't really like, I'm not a dildo person because I'm not usually super turned on when I want to use a dildo. And my, my body just is like, Oh, plastic. But at least with a person I'm like, turn on, it's warm. I actually love if there's like a partner that we, um, with, they can ejaculate inside and like lubricate the area a little bit first and then do multiple mm-hmm. rounds. It really helps me out a lot. Multiple um, rounds, guys. Again, it goes back to performance. Can your cock come and get hard again? That's always super nice. It's always, yeah, your refractory period is, is is great. So I know there's this myth out there. Oh my God, a guy who comes too fast, a guy who comes too fast. I don't care if a guy comes too fast. It's just about how can, can you get hard again and can we go? Then I don't care. In fact, I prefer it because now, especially if you did ejaculate inside, now it's like warm and it's like cozy and I feel relaxed. I'm turned on. And then and get hard again really quick. That's like ideal for me. I mean, I would add to that uh, my current partner who has a cock, <laughs> um, <laughs> he, I I struggle and I've talked about it a lot on this podcast. Um, I, sometimes it just takes me a long time to have an orgasm. And I'll tell you <laughs> what, one of, one of the many reasons I fell for him uh, and it, it's just the way he fucks, which is amazing, is of course he would come before me. I mean, how long I could, you know, it w- I mean, we were fucking for hours about what he would do to stave off, like t- to shorten his refractory period is then he would like go down and use a toy or his fingers or whatever with the lube from his cum to continue to fuck me and get me closer and closer to coming. And then by the time I was ready, he'd be getting hard and excited again. And then we'd have sex yeah. again, which by the way, like just that someone that a man knows to do that and doesn't stop once they come and they're like oh yeah we i can keep fucking you i mean because women we fuck each other without penises so a man like can come and continue to fuck if you you know learn how to fuck without your dick and you will be a good lane i know my favorite dick i am still playing with it uh and for me it's like you do you do look for a dick that fits your body and uh, and a big portion of it is how you use it. I have had sex with somebody who had a cock that was just big. Uh, and and though it was definitely too big for me, he did know how to stop before it was too deep Yeah, and how to angle it, which is... Yes, and that's another thing. Like sometimes depending on the curve, like it's not that it's too big, but sometimes it just feels... Different, I will say different cocks for me work best in different positions. Like if I look at some of the cocks I've had, there are some that just fit better, like in a missionary position. I that would be my favorite position with that partner. So, or and then another guy, like doggy style would be my favorite position with that partner, and the cock would feel the best in that angle. So a lot of times people ask me my favorite position. I'm always like, it's changed depending on the partner a lot of the time and and, and their cock. Um, yeah, like you said, sometimes it's just the way it fits will will change depending on how big it is and how if it's curved or not curved. Yeah, and I'm just fortunate that the cock I'm playing with right now is literally the perfect size for me. Um, yeah. And it hits yeah. My, <laughs> dude, my G spot like wakes up when it goes in. It's like, oh hey, like right uh, off the bat. And I have not yeah. had that happen where my my G spot itself just like the minute it goes in, it's just like hello. Like, it's like a Pavlov that like type of response because your body knows oh this guy can and what you said earlier i want to i forgot to mention a guy who knows how to pet like i've noticed that too there have been guys with bigger cocks and i've been like nervous because i know that my body will tend to like contract my muscles and then it'll be painful and he'll just really slow like i won't even notice and I'll be like really relaxed because the key for somebody like me is if I start feeling pain, it's like an automatic response and I will contract. But if you can avoid that pain in the beginning, I'll stay relaxed. And men who know to do that, then to just jam it in, it makes a big difference. <laughs> Jamming it in is, I, I mean, it in is never the move. <laughs> how often is it? it? You know, is it sometimes the move? I don't know. It only is if, if like we have a sexual chemistry going and you know, I'm like, but if it's like the first time or we're like, you know, and it's, yeah, I think there are contexts where that's what you want. But like, I feel like in the beginning, that initial penetration if, as a guy, don't jam it in unless you're pretty sure that's what she wants. Or, like, we'll yeah. ask for it. We'll say, fuck mm-hmm. me. 
We'll say fuck oh, me yeah. now, I'll fuck me that. hard. Yeah. Notice like guys who are cognizant of that, they'll be really slow. And then I'll be like, fine. And you said, I'm like, all right, fuck me hard as fuck now. And I love that. Be going slowly, be careful. And trust me, if you do that, she's going to want you to fuck her harder. At least I do. And she'll love your cock. How a cock looks to you, uh, a- attractiveness wise, can depend on how you use it on that person. Oh, that's, oh, that's like 50% for me, if not more. Guys, I think we've, uh, the main question men always have is about size, right? Like, let's just answer the question. And I have answered it on this podcast and in Triple X so many fucking times. And yet, still, I know you're not all convinced. <laughs> Big cocks are not better. Yes. I wholeheartedly agree. Um, not even a big cock for you is necessarily better. We're all different shapes and sizes. Um, it just depends on the person's preference. And for me, I love a medium cock, to be honest. Medium, if anything, maybe a little longer, but definitely not wide. Like I, That just scares me. I've also never had an uncircumcised. I don't know. I've had pictures. I know, but I've never had one in real life. So I have no idea what the difference is. People ask me all the time. I, I wonder if you have some insight. I'm like, I don't know. I've never had. Yeah, I've been with several. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so I would say during actual sex, I don't really notice much of any different. It's like any other cock where it is different is during oral sex, obviously, because okay. you are yeah. pull back the cover. Um, and I think, you know, also because I, you know, I fuck women and I go down on women, you know, people will say things and this really bothers me. Oh, like it's gross because it has that cover on it. Well, you don't say that to women and we've got, you know, uh, labia covered by outer lips and we've got our clit and we've got everything inside we all have to be hygienic um i also i i don't so just to be clear i don't necessarily i don't support circumcising uh boys uh so but however what you see primarily out there and and it's getting closer in my experience to half and half is circumcised oh, and uncircumcised and so, yeah, the only place that I notice a difference is with, with oral. With oral. I, I don't know. And I, I was always thinking, like, if I ever come, like, I'm in that situation, there's an uncircumcised, I think I'd be like, oh, shit, is this going to hurt? Like, I wouldn't know because I've never experienced it. I haven't, I never even really saw them until I started doing this. And I got a bunch of them in my DMs. I would say my DMs are probably like, I would say it's like 85 still circumcised, 85%, maybe 50 mm uncircumcised so i'd be interested to see what the i don't know what the actual percentage is or if more less and less people are circumcising i agree with you i don't think it's i think it's a weird tradition that we just like a bunch of our stupid traditions surrounding body parts and sex (laughs) well and my understanding is it does take some sensation away from men obviously not that too too. and it's hard for men to know because you're either circumcised or you're not and then they ask us like okay well for you guys does it feel the same or does it feel better does it feel worse and i can never answer the question but we heard it from somebody who has had fair share of both men who are aren't circumcised do you feel like they get more pleasure out of oral or regular sex? I wouldn't say that I have noticed a difference, like as far as the pleasure that men who are circumcised versus uncircumcised get. I haven't noticed a decrease in in Mm -hmm. circumcised men, but it's hard because each person, it isn't apples to apples. But here's what I do think is interesting when it comes to uh, uncircumcised men. Some of them have more skin to pull back and some have less depending okay. on the penis. Just like vagina. <laughs> and I, there have been times when I, I've actually had to be like, is is this uncircumcised? And it was because when they get fully erect, you know, of course, that amount of skin that covers becomes less. And, you know, so for a grower, that amount of skin suddenly isn't that much. One time I only saw dicks when they were pretty hard. And I remember the first time I saw it not, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> you know? They can get small. <laughs> yeah, they can get really small. I had no idea. So 
It was the first time I was like, oh, wow. I don't think that uncircumcised is unattractive. And I think that sometimes women <laughs> who say that, it, again, it's because we have been given one view of what a cock looks like. And it's this circumcised uh, version of it. I think that there is something, I'm going to be honest with you, I think there is something really primal, um, like earthy, uh ultra masculine about an uncircumcised cock. I don't know mm -hmm. if that's just in my mind. It's something about like, I'm just saying like it's more, it is more natural. It's more, it is more masculine in a way because that's the way men come into the world. And that's how men are naturally just the same way. Some men, which I don't think it's their business, but if they don't like when women alter themselves in certain ways, I can totally see what you're saying where it's like, well, you're altering the cock. You know, and it's not usually a decision they made, but. but right. As, well, as I mean, think about things that have come up with women's vaginas. So women have bleached their vagina. Women uh -huh. are ashamed of having um, big inner labia that come out. What do men will refer to it as? Uh, this is something I that just. Gets out, uh, or uh, a roast beef sandwich. Roast beef, oh, yeah. Fuck off. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and women will alter their bodies in lots of mm -hmm. ways to fit and Labiation. I do go to a lot of like med spas and stuff not for that but they always like advertise that I would I'm I would be terrified mortified of doing something like that but I'm like oh okay this is something that women and I'm not judging women that want to do it go for it um but I do wish that there was more representation and acceptance of the natural types of bodies we all have I'm not, that's not to say that a circumcised cock <laughs> is yeah, not yeah. <laughs> um, um, super masculine. I'm just giving credit to uncircumcised cocks and the beauty and the sexiness and the masculinity that is attached to that. And I think, um, you know, again, what I, when I find a cock attractive or unattractive, oftentimes that is attached to the rest of the human uh, that is included with the cock. But, you know, I mean, I, it's fair for everybody to have their preferences. Preferences, yeah. But I think what you're saying is something we hear a lot. Natural is sexy. Natural can be really sexy. Which brings me to, let's talk about hair and cocks and manscaping. What level of manscaping do you like with the cock? And I'm I, talking about the cock. Yes. I like not completely clean, but I like tamed for sure and that's kind of all I've been with I've never been with somebody who just completely did not um maintain the area at all and uh, I'm lucky a guy who lucky was lucky lucky you lucky you <laughs> <laughs> well even with one who like completely tried to make it just and, and I didn't to me it just looks like I don't know if there's nothing on a man it's just not as manly me and it's almost gives me like pee -pee -pee. I don't know I just like don't like it even though I'm personally I've lasered all my hair off so my hair I'm pretty bald but on a guy I just like okay you take care of the area you pay attention to it you trim whatever but it it's not completely clean and it's not like you don't do anything that's my problem. right right I I agree like Especially if you want us to go down and give you oral sex. It's really hard when there's hair in our eyes and in our nose. And, and I wouldn't even do it, to be honest with you. I would be like, sorry, I'm good. <laughs> well, and I mean, let's be fair. Women have the expectation to have our shit tamed. And yeah. lasering, I'm actually in the process of, I haven't yet started mm -hmm. getting lasered, but hopefully before summer, I will. Because I think just conditioning in society has basically said they don't want women to be super hairy. Also, mm -hmm. I'm going to be honest with you, I prefer not to have hair because for me and because I struggle orgasming, having a layer of hair actually blocks sensation. I, I experience more yeah. sensation without it. But, um, and I get that, like, so I've gone down on women and I don't think, think at least it's not coming to me I don't think I've gone down on a woman where I've just had to fight my way through bush there are women who just like big hairy men I actually like some hair on men at which I think people okay. find odd because I like women but I also like the variety however <laughs> I, I I want I want the hair 
to be dialed in, but not too short because also prickly balls like are yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, do not get yeah. prickly down there. Don't that prickly. I think that's a good. This is just our preference, I guess. But tame it, but don't. It needs to be long enough to not be prickly. Yeah, yeah. So listen to that, guys. You, the <laughs> hair on your dick and on your balls is important. It's important. Like either, you know, don't don't turn it into this like cactus down there. It, yeah, like, very uncomfortable, itchy. You can't lay against. If you do if that's what you want to do, then at least you have to know that you may acknowledge that to your partner. And make sure that they're okay with it, or that's what they because you if you are going to just let it run wild, you can't also expect and stick it into somebody's mouth or whatever and just be like, oh, well, you should accept this, you know, if we all have our preferences. Now I want to talk, can we talk about the urethral opening? You know, the hole at the top? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I actually do spend, a, when I'm giving oral sex to men, I spend a lot of time around the top first kissing like really just working the top before I really start going in so I always I notice it interesting well maybe I need needed to have you on uh the uh oral sex uh, cock sucking podcast we were talking about the different ways so you start at the tip so which means you do you get an up close personal view I get an up yeah I I guess I have what a lot of people would call dick sucking lips so I know that my because I don't have a big mouth and I also have a pretty strong gag reflex. So I'm not somebody that's going to be able to deep throat your huge cock. It's just not going to happen. So I'm like, all right, how can I make this like sexy or fun? Like, how can I make this something that is enjoyable without doing that? And for me, I'm like, okay, what are my strong suits? All right, I got these lips. Um, I can look up at you with these eyes, blah, 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 blah. So that's kind of like what I start with. And then I go and do the best I can, but I don't go immediately for, you know, the throat because I, I'm not going to do well in that and I don't enjoy it yeah hurts my jaw I get like yeah a it does and like I yeah I get I have locked jaw already I get if if I go down and do just the the cock in the mouth thing for too long I even have glands under here that will start to hurt and get a little swollen I I will say I like to only really give men oral sex if I feel like we have like a good, cause I don't really get much out of it. So I have to like, want you to be very pleased. And like, usually I want like some kind of connection between us or whatever. Like if it's just a random, I don't even really do a lot of random hookups, but if I were to, I'm probably not. Sorry. How do you feel about the urethral opening? What do you like? What do you not like? Do you have a relationship with it? Or are you just like a whole's hole? I, I, yeah, I don't really have a relationship with it, to be honest with you. It's just there. I don't, I don't, it's just neutral for me. It's just neutral. Well, yeah. I the largest cock I have ever been with was mm-hmm. from my elbow to my wrist. And it oh was Oh my god, that and it, scares me. Yeah. Well, and the ironic thing was I had had a long talk with this person before and this was many years ago. I've I've talked about it on this podcast a little bit. I had said to him, I I told him I was small. We'd had all these sexy conversation and he unfurled his cock. It literally unrolled from his pants and there before me was this urethral hole that was like it was huge and it looked oh, wow. like it was screaming at me. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> and that was the only I so I have been very in tune with the urethral hole. I don't even know if that is like the word for it, but you guys know. Yeah, I don't know either. But now after this conversation, I feel like I'm going to be pay far more attention to it. I'm going to get an email from you. Oh, my God. I really looked <laughs> down the hole and here's how I feel. So you don't have a, prof- pr- a preference on that. I, I definitely prefer, prefer the hole to be like not um, uh, giant. I'm afraid we, we're giving, uh, we're going to give listeners a new um, new thing to be worried about. But that was, oh. was scary. Well, it is interesting because it's like the guys with the huge, massive cocks, they're never the ones that are really insecure for my, you know, so it like, they're the ones that society is saying have it the best. They have these huge, amazing cocks. So I'm not too worried about them getting some, not negative feedback. That's not what I would say this, but some people just being like, Hey, yeah, you may be what everybody loves, but like, personally, I don't, 
love that. You know, it's not like my thing. Like if a guy is if someone somewhere is like, I prefer small tits. Like I'm like, great. Cause you know, a lot of people are telling women that small tits are unattractive and that big tits are only what's attractive. So I'm not going to do Right, right. Um, let's uh, talk about we've talked about your preference on girth. You don't like girthy cocks. I don't oh. know that I've thought about it that much. I don't know that that I care about that that much. Mm-hmm. I don't, maybe I've just never experienced what I would consider a hugely girthy cock, except for the large one, which was just large. Uh, the large ones have been large in all of the ways. I've ne- oh, I will say this. I was with, I know, now this is interesting because maybe you would have liked that cock. I was with one cock that I felt was like longer, but it was skinny and I didn't like I the- like. I like the long skinny cocks and I also don't like if there's a bunch of visible veins or something. I, I think I just, my body thinks it'll be like more textured and it'll hurt more. So the, my favorite cock, like, I usually find with men of color, which is usually my preference, it, it, they, you don't see like the veins and everything as much. So it just looks less scary to me than a very textured, veiny cock, especially that has the width. Like, my, yeah. My Interestingly, now that I think about it, the cock that I'm currently with is not veiny at all Mm. i feel i feel like i'm giving away too much personal information but you're right like (laughs) i I was gonna ask you about veins um yeah and again this isn't something someone can control but veins can be you know some women my boobs are veiny you know i I, so it's not me saying oh you have like i have veins um on my boobs not my vagina i don't probably i don't know (laughs) not not not, you know what i'm saying but Yeah. yeah if we're talking about preference, that's preference. And like I've mentioned in previous episodes, this is just our opinions. And we even differ on some things. And like mm-hmm. it's on, like I said, Reddit, there's a whole thread for veiny big boobs. <laughs> like, oh, interesting. Thread for veiny cocks. Like there are people who specifically, all the things you're insecure about, somebody probably is looking for that exact thing. And that's what turns them on the most. So you don't like veiny cocks. I would say probably I don't look at it as much, although I definitely I would say that one of the things that I do find beautiful in my partner's cock is that it isn't veiny at all. It's the perfect size and it really doesn't have a massive curve to it. I definitely have been with a couple of cocks that had like really strong curves. I was like, oh, I, I'm scared. I get really scared because I even have one. Of, you know, those like G spot dildos or whatever that like curve. I can't even put those in because like once I like I feel like if I do like contract, I can't, I feel like it's stuck. Like, oh, my God, it's just it's like it scares me. It's like a phobia I have. And I've never been with a super curvy one but even if it's a little curve like i like even especially if i'm on top like it's so diff i just haven't had a, a lot of experience so like i can't get it right like i have it has to be I, that's another thing we're talking about i guess cock compatibility with our vaginas is there are just certain cocks that just i feel like being on top is the hardest because that's the one where i'm actually versus they're doing it and definitely there are certain cocks that I just cannot ride. I can't ride like this, the way they're shaped. Like I just can't do it. And then there are other ones where it really comes much easier to me. And it, it has to be like the shape and, and everything else in the, I don't know, but. And again, I, I always want to go back to, if you are in love with somebody and you're like, all right, we fell in love. Now our equipment has met and and there seems to be some physical incompatibilities. There are always solutions to working through yeah. that and making it the best fit ever, which it just yeah. means taking time together. However, you know, it's always dreamy when you meet someone and then you your genitals are meet. sexually compatible. Yeah, yeah I yeah. think. But I, I will say like, don't underestimate what you just said. And a lot of guys, they think like, oh, is my cock good enough? Is this why I'm not getting women? I'm like, usually by the time we're seeing your cock, you're already like in the door. Like, unless there's like you said, like the monster cocks or something where I feel like I'm uncomfortable, I'm probably, we're probably going to go through (laughs) with the sex by that point. So if you think your cock is with prevent, it's most likely that's not the case. And I am one of those girls that if I really like someone and we're having sex, I Every single guy that's been in that, I thought they had the best cock in the world. 
And it's only when I'm far enough removed or detached from the situation that I can actually look back at it objectively. Because in the time where I'm really into them, I think this is the best. Oh my God, this is the best sex in the world. This is the best cock in the world. Like you just love that person and you love being with them that you think just like, you know, a lot of us when we're with, we think our partner is the most attractive person in the world. Whereas Mm -hmm. if that, if they weren't your partner, you just saw them on the street, you probably wouldn't think they're as attractive as you do because you like them. And don't underestimate that. It's not all about how you look and how your cock looks. If you have that connection with somebody and there's been times where that's happened. And then I broke up with the person. I don't feel as good. And then we have sex again. And I'm like, what? I was like, this, this isn't as good. Like, I thought this is, this is like average now, you know, even yeah. though back then I thought it was like the greatest sex in the world. So at least that's the case for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I would say that's the case for me. I'm going to say case in point. Do you remember when Captain America's dick pic went viral? He accidentally, the actor, why am I forgetting the actor's name? I see his face. Uh, Yeah, I'm not a superhero. Anyways, whatever. You guys all know who Captain America was. And he, instead of sending a dick pic to his partner, posted it, I think, to Twitter and didn't get it down quick enough. And I got a good glimpse at Captain America's cock. And the ongoing joke was like, all men were like, wow, I feel so much better about myself because he is still sexy, still sexy. That guy has the most average cock I've ever seen. I wouldn't even say from the dark picture that I saw of his cock, it wasn't even that cute. But do you think for a heartbeat of a second that every woman... (laughs) wouldn't fuck him (laughs) if she had the chance folks i will say at least in my experience the men that i've been with that were like the most desired whether it's like an athlete or whatever i've been it's been underwhelming like what you would expect versus like the like random quiet skinny guy that's a little like alternative in your class that doesn't say anything and then he comes out with this cock and you're like oh my god (laughs) you really can't tell Because I think as human beings, we like to categorize people. So when we see somebody attractive and tall, we're like, oh, his cock must, it doesn't always, I don't feel like there's like, I don't feel like I'm seeing a pattern. Like some people are big hands, big, like it really doesn't work like that. There is no, no predictor. But on that note, two things we're going to do before we close this up. A, I have some famous cock pictures we are going to look at and rate to give you guys a a taste. Uh, You, if you're on my YouTube channel, mm, I'm not sure if I have to blur them out or not. I'll figure that out, but you can go to it. And then we are going to close with cocks. So I'm going to give you a moment to think about it while I show you other cocks. Um, that if you could see this person's penis, who would it be? Who out there in the land of well, famous people, probably, probably, or people, you know, if you could see their cock, whose would it be? But b- before we get to that, I have, um, I'm going to, three cocks, three cocks I'm going to have us go through real quick because we are, of oh. course, as always, going over time. And we are going to start with the most famous one. It is the Statue of David's Penis. Uh, yeah. <laughs> We're going to rate it. And I'm going to give you, it's on my phone. I'm going to get, I'm, I've, I'm zoomed in. Here it is. You can hey. see what I like about this penis. Now, obviously, you know what we like and don't like. <laughs> well, I want to start with what I like about it. It's obviously flaccid. First of all, mm-hmm. that bush isn't tamed, but it is. I, I mean, it's kind of perfect bush. I could deal with that bush. It is a perfect bush. It is like it's like brush. <laughs> yeah. And it's kind of nice because it is brushed, but it's back from the penis. So it wouldn't yeah. get all up in my face. It's definitely been manicured like, mm, you know, a, a garden hedge. The other thing uh, that I like, well, this is an uncircumcised penis. I don't know if you can see the detail. Mm-hmm. You might have to pull it up for yourself. Uh, and I kind of like as a flaccid penis, the uh, penis to ball ratio. We did not get to talking about balls, yeah, unfortunately. So I will tell you this, when I do my rates, if someone asks for a text rate, I go size. I go um, head to shaft ratio is another one that people are always curious about. I go shape and then I go mm-hmm. color slash vein. That's usually the categories I rate in. So we could do it that way. Too. Wow. But That's I never awesome. did. I've actually never done the uh, maintain like maintenance and grooming. Um, I will say a lot of the ninety percent of the dicks I get more than that are groomed enough that the grooming doesn't bother me. Like I rarely get somebody that just sends me something really messy. 
What do you prefer in the head to shaft ratio? I don't like a big head. If the head is big, I think it's the same thing for me because that's what goes in first. And I'm like, oh, scary. <laughs> I like a very, like, I like the head shape to also just be very, like, no abnormalities, like, just very, a nice, perfect little off and then a narrow. That's my favorite. All right. Now we know. That is what's most compatible with my vagina, I would say. Uh, the cock to ball ratio on this, aren't those, those are also lovely balls. Those are very nice balls. The what? cock is a little tiny, you know. <laughs> well, it's, it could be, he could be a grower. We don't know. He could be a grower. Yeah, we don't know. And I, but I, again, I don't, I never know. I mean, is like, if some, could something that small go to something really big? I don't know how that works. I don't know the anatomy of men. Yeah. Oh, okay. 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 <laughs> I don't think though. I, I, think I, usually, I mean, let's be honest. They don't, usually don't get super, super big, but the, he, he's probably okay. average. I think this is an average cock right here is what I think. Okay. Now I'm going to show you kind of a series and this is a very famous cock and I have a lot of opinions about it. Uh, Ron Jeremy, yeah. the famous porn star. He is a, he was famous. Have you heard of him? No, oh I don't. I ne I don't watch like mainstream. Oh, he's. This is from the seventies, and he was okay. known for his giant cock. Are you ready for this? Or I, I'm, I have a feeling it's going to be too much for me. Well, I this was him <laughs> in his attractive day, and he, so he was also famous because he'd suck his own cock. Which I've got. We'll talk. That's oh. a different. That's a different podcast. Yeah. Uh, here, here we've got. Yeah. Uh, can you see? Let's wait for it to. There's like a, oh, I see it. Oh, wow. That is a very huge cock. And it's, and it's very veiny. You probably can't see it because of the. Yeah, there's a light glare, but I can see the shape of it, but I can't see. Definitely veiny. Maybe I can get it closer. Yeah. I, I just want to like tap it. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah, the veins would, the veins kind of not my preference. Although now, he has the he, head. Like, blew me away with his personality and demeanor and I was so attracted to him I would take it well let me update you on Mr. Ron Jeremy and he's still doing porn and I find him revolting oh he's still doing it <laughs> yeah. all right you know what <laughs> oh god yeah um and what his is that? how old is he now at 69 he's currently 69 years old he is not aging well um but yeah <laughs> So what I did notice about his cock was he had the kind of head that you like. His, his cock is way too big for you and me. And yeah, yeah. Generally That's speaking, big. if you can mm -hmm. suck your own cock, it's too big. Um, but he did have the preferred head. Preferred head. The I will say people love that I can suck my own. Ooh. I think That's that is very... different, though. I think that's very different. I agree. I think it's very different. And it's not something that I do unless like I'm performing and people want to see it. No. All right. So let's sum this up with Cox. You want to see, I want to see Idris Elba. I had a, I've had a crush on him for a long time and I just, yes, I, I want to think like he's the type of man that like my incorrect, I guess, assumptions would be like, it's probably really big, but I don't know. <laughs> Could not be, but I'm I curious. think, I think it would be perfect. You think it'd be perfect? I mean, he is sort of a perfect. He's sort of a perfect person. Yeah. 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 God, what a good call. I don't think I can outdo that. <laughs> well, so. I, Bolt's picture went viral once on Twitter. I don't know if you remember this two years ago, but he was walking and you could kind of, it was, everybody was like, and it looked, it looked really big. Um, it looked nice. Um, and people were like, you know, he's, he's very sexy and he's one of those sexy men that's just, completely sexy in a masculine way like there's a lot of men that are attractive but almost like a in like sometimes a feminine way like they're beautiful mm. he's beautiful he's just sexy. he's just masculine and sexy and that's why i want to see his yeah i can't i can't think of anyone to, to oh, outdo that you don't have to outdo what would what, were, what was going to be your answer well kit what is his last name john snow from oh ah, i'd be interested in that i'd want to know he's 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 really short in real life that's what i heard mm -hmm. i don't know how in real life but again this is not an indicator of how big your cock is even though so many of us are primed to think it is 
No, 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 no. One of uh, the only monster cock I've been with in the last maybe five years was with a man who was short. Mm. So height is. I noticed this is this is just anecdotally, and I don't think this is like we did an empirical study. Skinny guys, like sometimes skinny guys have the long skinny cock they like. Like I feel like they have it more often. Yeah. Don't know why. I would believe that. So, yeah, I think he would. Why am I blanking out on? I feel like The Rock would have a very oh. veiny cock. I think he would. I think he would. And also, vein. I don't know if sometimes you can see at least the color of the vein more the lighter your skin is. So that's why I think, like, I have really light skin. So do you. <laughs> yeah. um, that's why you can see, I think, and I have larger chest. You can see. Especially unless my nipples are hard, you can like see the vein sometimes, depending on the lighting. So if there's a, if I'm thinking of a guy and I think of him as a, someone with lighter complexion, I assume that there's more of a chance that I'm going to see the veins are going to be more prominent than like on an Idris Elba. Even though he could be veiny, it just wouldn't be as noticeable. It's kind of like, you know, on darker skin, muscle tone is more, no like it's just yeah. the, your skin, your skin tone can determine how something, how veins are going to look. <sighs> Oddly enough, right now, there aren't a ton of men that I'm like lusting after who I'm like, oh, I really want to see your cock. Now that I think about it, I thought to ask you the question and yeah. I never even thought about like, <laughs> whose cock do I want to see right now? I guess I don't have a long list. And honestly, I don't think about that a lot. Well, speaking of cocks, rating them and seeing them, we need to get on to the triple X episode. So we are going to sign out here and then go rate some cocks. But before we do that, will you take a moment to tell my listeners where they can find you? Yes. Yeah, so if you just go to jasminejafar.com, J-A-Z-M-E-N-J-A-F-A-R.com, it'll have all my socials on there, including my OnlyFans, where you can get explicit content. And it'll have all my other socials. I have a YouTube channel. I have an Instagram. I go live on Twitch once a week. Uh, we call it Monday Fun Day, where I go live on Twitch. And we usually discuss like a topic. Like last week, we discussed the feminist debate surrounding sex work. And then right after, we go straight to my OnlyFans. And we do a naked live. And I usually orgasm on camera if I get if we reach our tip goal. Um, and I use toys or sometimes. We do all kinds of stuff. But I love that dynamic, actually, just because... People are like, this is so weird to see you in like this context and to see you in this context. And some men like message me and they're like, it's hard to even like, I feel bad for getting turned on by you because, you know, and I'm like, no, this is why I do it because we're all multifaceted human beings and you can see me in a sexual context one minute and the next minute we could discuss some intellectual topic. So make sure you follow me on all my socials. I do different kinds of content on all of them. And depending on what you're into, you can find the platform that best suits you. There you go. I love that. I love they get to see like uh, the juxtaposition of the intellectual yeah. part of your personality and then sexual and see how those feed each other and enhance yeah. things. So exactly. Definitely go and follow her. You guys know where to find me, Locker Room Talking Shots on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, join me on TikTok at Locker Room Talking Shots Podcast. Uh, join Triple X. I am sharing all of my sexual, sexy adventures, thoughts, and lots of shits going on in my life right now. So uh, keep up with it. And I also have a Patreon where if you subscribe there, you will get access to the Triple X. So um, all the links are going to be in the description of this episode. So scroll on down and join us. Uh, so until next time, let's go rate dicks. I'll see y'all in the locker room. Cheers. Ring loop.